Chase Branch. I'm extremely excited to be back in Detroit uh, with the Red Wings. The city, uh, Red Wing fans. Hall of Famer Steve Eiserman announces the homecoming Red Wings fans have been hoping and praying for. This big story breaking first at four. We also know the Easter forecast is critical for your plan, so we are tracking the very latest radar. One day of the weekend definitely looks better than the other. We'll explain first at four. Start. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, it is hard to overstate just how excited Red Wings fans are about the return of Steve Eiserman to Detroit. Now, you just heard the announcement on Local 4. The captain brought home three Stanley Cubs, and now he's coming home. We've got team coverage for you. It's Sean Lay live downtown with a look at businesses ready to celebrate and cash in. But let's start with Jason Colthorpe, who's been monitoring the Red Wings news conference. And Jason, it is a big day. Yeah, it's a huge day, Karen, and I agree with you. You cannot overstate what this means for the Detroit Red Wings in the city of Detroit. As Red Wings fans, we've watched and hoped for this for the last few years, but weren't 100% certain this might happen, especially after you saw what Steve Eisenman was able to do in his time in Tampa Bay. And he really made the graduation from a player, a Hall of Fame player, to a front office executive. In 2015, he was the executive of the GM of the year. And not only did he just find and sign good players in Tampa to build a successful team, he rebuilt that scouting system from the ground up. So he literally built their organization, which has ruled the NHL the last few years. This year they won the president's trophy. So to get him back into hockey town, and as you heard in that news conference, Ken Holland, a great GM to step aside gracefully to make it happen, huge. Take a listen. I am thrilled to be back as the general manager. I'm grateful for the confidence that Chris and Mrs. Illich are showing in me and putting me in such what I consider an extremely important position. Uh, I thank you and I look forward to working for you and with you in, in our quest again to, to return to the place where uh, this club is expected to be. Now in Detroit, we've had legends come back to lead their teams in the past. Some have been successful, others not so much. but. As a hockey fan, and I think around the city, people feel this just feels a little bit different. Uh, and it's, I don't think it's a coincidence that on April 19, 2019, number 19 is coming back. So we're going to be, we have much more to unpack on this, obviously, a long way to go. And we'll do that a little bit later on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. Karen? All right. Well, so much excitement today. We appreciate it, Jason. Okay, let's go over to Sean Lay. He's been tracking that ripple effect of the announcement already being felt by businesses and, of course, devoted fans. What are folks saying, Sean? You can see the announcements downtown. Karen, t take a look at LCA Little Caesars. Big, bright, beautiful sign there. Welcome home. Follow me this way down the street in Hockey Town, the famed Fox Theater, the marquee. Welcome home. Karen, we've been all over town today. We keep hearing three things. This is big. This is big. This is big. It is a sector exciting. It's better than coffee this morning. <laughs> it's like coffee on top of coffee this morning. It's just like, it's the best thing I heard so far this year. The best thing people have heard so far this year on April 19th, 2019, number 19 is coming home. The captain is coming back to run the Red Wings. I saw the jersey when he walked in. I'm like, man, you might have to get one of those. That is why Dennis McVitie is doing some shopping today at Pro Sports Zone in Livonia. That's what brought me in. Yeah, the, the Eisman is gonna, gonna help get us back on track, get us to the cup and do the deal, you know, for the Wings. The return of the captain is a very big deal. The Wings aren't in the playoffs and now expectations for the Wings is through the roof. It's it's kind of an, an excitement. I mean, look, I'm here by, I mean, it's kind of like you, you get to come come back and and, and go down to the, the LCA and, and uh, just some credibility, I think, some excitement. They, they needed some excitement. A boost, a major shot in the arm, a lightning bolt even. Steve Eiserman coming back, trending on Twitter right now. Uh, Karen, Stevie Y and let's go Red Wings. That is big. Coming up at 5 o'clock, we're in studio with 97.1 The Ticket to see uh, what the sports guys are talking about, what the callers are talking about, and a local fashion designer. I caught up with him. He's already been asked to make a Steve Eiserman throwback starter jacket. All coming up Ooh. live at 5.
Last to look forward to. All right, we appreciate it, Sean. And while Red Wings fans are hoping Iserman, of course, will help build a better future for the team, we found many people talking about their happiest memories from his glory days. My dad had season tickets when I was growing up for the Red Wings, so I got to grow up pretty much at the Joe there a couple times a week. So I was pretty much growing up down there, rooting him on. Steve Iserman was always my guy, so great to see him back. He's a legend here in Detroit. I mean, he's... He is hockey in Detroit. He and Gordie Howe, so very excited he's coming back. And I think I'm going to probably go out and buy some Wings tickets now. Positive. Let's see. Um, dynamic. Prismatic. A winner. How about those things? Yeah. Um, yeah, we want to bring that positive vibe back to Detroit. Now our coverage of Iserman's homecoming continues at 5. We'll get the pulse of sports radio, as Sean mentioned. We're going to hear from the guys at 97.1 The Ticket and fans who have been calling in all day. Then at 6, meet a local fashion designer who is working on something pretty special to welcome the captain back. And we've got lots of extras online, including a heartfelt tribute from 2002 from the Local 4 archives. We pulled up some great stuff, put it together. All things Iserman at clickondetroit.com. Definitely check it out. Well, we have seen so much rain over the past two days. Will things get any better for the holiday weekend? Andrew is in for Ben, and Andrew, a lot of people do have some outdoor plans. Oh, they certainly do, and it looks like Easter Sunday is looking good, but let's talk about the here and now. We've got a break from the rain. Thank goodness. It was, as we've gone through late this afternoon and into this evening, it remains dry. But... There's more rain down to our south, a ton of it. We have thunderstorms raging through the Carolinas where they're dealing with a tornado threat. Not here. We are looking at rain, though, that moves in from the south as this area of low pressure moves northward. A lot of that rain arriving as we get close to 10 p.m., 11 p.m., and afterward. And the wind shifts and comes out of the north-northeast. So that uh, poses flood possibilities once again along the shoreline of Lake Huron and, yes, Lake Erie. Later on tonight and into your Saturday, the first bits of rain arrive later on this evening, just sprinkles, but then more widespread, heavier rain by midnight and afterward. We'll talk about what that means for your Saturday. And we'll We'll talk about that Sunday sunshine for Easter Sunday in minutes. All right, thank you, Andrew. Detroit police say an argument at a shoe store turns deadly when a young man is shot and killed. It happened this morning at the Villa Shoe Store on Seven Mile and Gratiot. That's on the city's east side. Police say two men got into a fight inside the shoe store, then took it outside. Witnesses say the men were fighting over shoes. A 20 year old man ended up dead. Right now, police are still looking for the shooter. Today we're learning more about that mystery substance that was found in a Sterling Heights drain. We talked about that yesterday. Macomb County Public Works Commissioner Candace Miller says she is 100% certain that that white milky substance is from concrete washout. Miller says a local business most likely did not properly remove concrete after a job leading to the washout. The county is now trying to figure out exactly where it came from. If President Trump and his allies are hoping to put the Robert Mueller report in the past, they will be disappointed with new action from Congress. Today, the chair of the House Judiciary Committee subpoenaed the full report without redactions. Jerry Nadler wants the report from the Justice Department by May 1st. Lawmakers also want to hear from Robert Mueller himself in the next month. The president is in Florida, but continued tweets attacking the report, calling some statements in the report, quote, fabricated and totally untrue. Here's new reaction from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Uh, the Congress of the United States will honor its oath of office to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, to protect our democracy. Pelosi made the comment while visiting Northern Ireland, saying it wouldn't be appropriate to talk about impeachment or criticize the president while abroad. Still ahead, first at four, a lot of people say that smoking marijuana leads to the munchies. So, of course, you ask, does that affect your weight? The answer is going to probably surprise you. And one mother's potty training emergency. She thinks she did the best she could to help her son, but a sheriff's deputy disagreed. Oh, we'll explain that one. Paula. Hi, Karen. So there's a city inside a city, and you probably don't even realize it's in your own backyard. This is what's going on right now. I need to tell you, it is intense. You're going to hold your breath through this next story. I'll have a live report. Happening right now in your backyard, this elite training. Now, this small village constructed for the sole purpose of teaching emergency personnel how to save lives. It's recognized as one of the best in the country, but few of us locals even know it exists. Well, today, 
Paula Tutman is there in the middle of it all. So Paula, exactly where is this happening? Okay, so I'm in Auburn Hills, and I think, Karen, because of the kind of kinds of reporting and stories that you do, you know that there's a national shortage of police officers, firefighters, medics, EMS workers. You know it can be very thankless, it's very difficult, and so talent is at a premium. At this facility right now, they are developing the best talent, and it's the way that they do it that makes it so unique. On any given day, it can look like Armageddon, fires, fights, emergencies, in less than three square blocks. Put your hand on the steering wheel. I, I'm steering wheel. I'm steering wheel. This is what it looks like at Crest on the campus of Oakland Community College. The, the, vehicle. the campus of the Combined Regional Emergency Services Training is where first responders, police, fire, and EMS come to train in real time. Uh, and what it is essentially is a mock city. So we have three houses, all different designs. We have a motel, we have a convenience store and gas station, then we have a bank. Then up at the top, we have a burn tower. So what it does is it gives law enforcement, firefighters, and emergency services personnel like EMS to uh, be able to work in an environment that is realistic. This week we did foot pursuits where we had to engage in contact with one of our instructors who was padded up. There are fewer than five campuses like this in the country, and the difference between simulation and real life is real life training can save lives. So when they go in, they deal with a person right at the door. If it's an emergency, they go, they make entry into the house. If it's a medical emergency, the person will have to learn how to traverse stairs to bring people down in a gurney. If you can get me as close as possible to what it's gonna be like once I leave here and, and actually on the job, and that's going to benefit benefit me more than watching a video of something that happened or maybe seeing a PowerPoint. If you're more prepared, you're going to be quicker on the ground when you get out of training. This you do the back of the head. Other states actually send candidates to be trained here, and then reps from all over the country converge to see the trainees, knowing that if they can get one or two of these students, they graduate ready to work, very little baptism by fire, because they've already experienced it. Nothing's like real life, right? So we can train as much as we want to. We can talk about everything, but as soon as we go out there and we actually practice and we get our hands on and we have real patience, we actually have to think like it's real life, which makes us nice. a lot better in my opinion. Oh my gosh, it is intense. It is intensive. Uh, sometimes it's actually hard to watch, but this is really important work. Uh, Karen, I'm sure you're not surprised that at least half of these uh, cadets already have jobs waiting for them. The others are already in the interview process, and it's not just the newbies who are here. They also bring in seasoned veterans for new training and new processes. Ugh. It's it's so intensive just to watch and, and, and experience this. It really is cool. I love the way they set up the different scenarios because it is real life. I do have a question. In terms of training, is this like variety? Maybe you come for a day or maybe you come for a few hours. How does that work oh, in terms no. of how much time you spend? No. No, 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 no. This this is real training. And in fact, these guys are already halfway in. They've been training for two months. They graduate in June. This is this is the real deal. It's okay. not the weekend. So it's very intense. All right. We appreciate it. Thank you, Paula. Well, at least three people have died as severe storms actually spawn tornadoes across the southern United States. Take a look at some of this damage. This is a look from the Atlanta area where the wind and heavy rain brought down trees, knocked out power and then damaged buildings. Now, it's causing travel trouble during this very busy holiday weekend. Now take a look in Louisiana. That's where some cars had to be towed in the intense floods and then others were crushed by trees. One of the hardest hit areas was Mississippi. And you can see the aftermath of a twister that tore through neighborhoods. That destructive weather is now moving east. Never is a good time for destruction like that, of course. But obviously when people are traveling and trying to see family, that's just a horrible image to be seeing. Our hearts go out to those That's folks. right. We hope and pray for the best. Yeah. And like the past couple of weekends, storms like that are so big, they affect us, yeah, either simultaneously do. or later on. Now, we're not going to see any severe weather over the weekend, nothing like tornadoes or severe thunderstorms, but we are certainly going to see more rain. Currently, we're looking at cloudy skies, chilly conditions, not much rain as of yet.
the next batch of rain arrives later on tonight as we get closer to midnight and certainly afterward for the start of our Saturday. Here's that storm system Karen was talking about. There are the storms as they're now leaving the Atlanta area, now raging through portions of the Carolinas, into Virginia, also the nation's capital. Well, this area of low pressure responsible for it, it is going to slowly move to the north. As it jogs in our direction, it becomes wetter by late tonight and as we go into our Saturday, but it starts to move away by Sunday. We'll talk about that in a second. First, overnight tonight, it still remains chilly. Right now we're in the low 40s. We'll continue to have low 40s and upper 30s overnight, down to about 40 degrees in the metro zone. Everyone's in the same boat. Temperatures are pretty uniform. Upper 30s to around 41 in Tecumseh in our south zone, west of 275 in the west zone, 39 degrees for our neighbors over in Howell. Keep those blankets handy to our north as well. Temperatures slightly lower, maybe middle and upper 30s by the time you join me tomorrow morning on Local 4 News today. In places like Yale and also in Lapeer, with temperatures down to around 37 or 39 degrees. It's a chilly 44 right now. A bit breezy out there with winds around 15 miles per hour, making it feel a bit colder. So grab your favorite Tiger's coat, jacket, hat. If you have a jacket, make sure you layer up with a Tiger's sweatshirt. As you cheer on the Tigers as they're playing the White Sox, it'll be cloudy for the start of the game. Plan on an on-time start. There might be a sprinkle or two, but it should start on time at 7:10. But Rain starts to move in with sprinkles in the middle of the game and some rain for the ride home as you get closer to 10 p.m. and afterward. 43 right now for our friends over in uh, Livonia. So everyone's chilly. Look how much colder it is than yesterday. 21, 28 degrees lower than uh, just 24 hours ago. And that wind, pretty brisk right now at around 15 to 20 miles per hour or greater and a little gusty at times. And those winds eventually out of the northeast pose a flood risk once again along the lakeshore. So lakeshore flood advisory up from Monroe County, St. Clair and Sanilac County from tonight into tomorrow. Here's the soggy weather as it moves in. Notice when many of us are sleeping overnight tonight, but if you have any plans on this good Friday for this evening going to and from services, you're fine. Tomorrow it is going to be wet, especially in the morning. Some of those showers heavy at times, so watch out for pounding on the roadways. But like I said, it becomes drier and milder just in time for Easter Sunday. So more rain arrives tonight with temperatures in the upper 30s to about 40 degrees. 48 tomorrow, Karen, uh, during the afternoon. A little bit wet outside the outside LCA for the Pistons game. Look at Easter, partly sunny, temperatures back into the 60s and overall milder next week. Back. All right, thank you so much, Andrew. Still ahead, how much money has Jeopardy James put in his bank account? Well, the number keeps growing. Plus, surprising research about marijuana and your weight. We've got trending stories coming your way. First, he really had to go, really had to go. How one family's potty training emergency has landed this pregnant mother in court. Everybody's talking about this, and we will as well, right after the break. Um. All right, let's talk about what's trending on this Friday. Many parents who know the challenges of potty training are talking about this one. Okay, there was a pregnant mom of three, of a three-year-old who was given a ticket for disorderly conduct for a potty training accident. Brooke John says her little boy just had to go. They stopped at a gas station, but the little guy just couldn't make it to the bathroom. So she tried to shield him as he, well, did what he needed to do in the parking lot. A sheriff's deputy saw, wrote the citation. She pleaded not guilty and hopes to get it resolved before her little boy becomes a big brother. All right, here is some surprising research on this Friday about people who smoke marijuana. Now, you may have heard when you smoke pot, you get the munchies. Well, that could make you worry about gaining weight. New research from Michigan State University suggests people who smoke marijuana actually weigh less than adults who do not. Researchers followed people for three years. They found marijuana users were more likely to be at a normal, healthier weight and stay that way than people who don't use marijuana. Now, it's not clear why marijuana seems to have that effect, so obviously more research is needed. Well, obviously, this story also is trending today. Jeopardy! James just keeps going. If you're not watching this guy in action, you definitely want to get on board. James Holzhauer could be changing the way people actually play Jeopardy! forever. He starts at the bottom of the categories, then he jumps around looking for those daily doubles. So far, he's won nearly $800,000. So can he keep his win streak alive? Find out tonight at 7.30 on Local 4. Still ahead, first at four, it is the biggest story of the day. The captain is coming home. We have your comments on the return of Steve Eiserman. Funny, touching, and one for the ladies. That's coming up next. Here's now. 
Finally, everybody talking about Steve Eiserman today, and it is true, the captain is coming home to the Red Wings. Oh, you said it, Karen. Everyone is celebrating. One fan writes, welcome home, Eiserman. Best news ever. And look at this one from Kevin, quote, welcome home, Mr. Eiserman. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Illich is smiling from the heavens. Adrian speaks for many women writing, looks like my crush on Steve Eiserman will also be returning. <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining us. First at four, more on Eiserman's return tonight at five.